Hello and welcome to the DPDL Talent Development Podcast brought to you by Double Pass. I'm your host Sarthak Dubey and this is a show where we talk about grassroots football, picking the brains of some of the leading experts in the field of talent development. In today's episode, I have with me someone who's got a distinguished career in Indian football, both as a player and as a coach. As a player, he's represented some of the leading clubs in Indian football all the way from Air India Churchill Brothers, East Bengal, Mohammedan Sporting and Mahindra United. Alongside that, he's also played for the national team. As a coach, he's one of the rare Indian coaches who got the opportunity to coach at the first team level in the Indian Super League. And this is not the best part about him. The best part is that he's a DPDL parent. I'm delighted to welcome Naushad Musa on today's episode. So, firstly, welcome to the DPDL Talent Development Podcast, sir. We are really, really uh, happy to have you here. And one of one of the main reasons why we were so excited to record this podcast with you uh, is because of this this multi dynamic. Uh, you are the most multi dynamic stakeholder at DPDL, and I'll explain why. Because uh, you are one of those rare commodities that has played for uh, played for Indian football. uh you've you've represented uh, many clubs as a coach but for us most importantly you're a dpdl parent as well right and that's a very rare that's a very rare uh, combination that we see at dpdl so firstly we are very happy to have you on the show uh and uh, you know thank you thank you so much for your time yeah, it's an, it's an honor for me to be here <laughs> talking to you thank you sir so uh you know today's episode how we want to divide it is these three combinations that we spoke about you know your life as a player your life as a coach and your life as a parent right because these are the three audiences that even we have at dpdl mm-hmm. um, you know players coaches and parents and everybody wants to listen in everyone wants um, to know more about talent development from a leading expert uh, such as yourself right um, so yeah that's how we'll divide today's podcast into three into three uh, portions so let's begin with your journey as a player right that's the first thing uh where did your career start you know where did your love for football first begin uh you know and what's your journey like as a player yeah uh, see as far as i remember you know from class to i was good in sports i was a good athlete uh maybe i was very skinny lanky so i i was going for 100 200 meters so somewhere i lacked the strength <laughs> okay. uh but i was uh, good at football so i remember my where i was staying it's baba atomic research center my dad was working there so we used to have a tournament there where those days we used to have this orke mills mafat lal tata so this were the leading clubs which would come there and play football and that tournament was something which i saw the players you know uh playing and that really attracted me so that's when i got uh, to much involved into the game and then what happened was there was a team called cosmos where the coach who made me a uh, total not only a player but as a human also you know he helped me uh be be a all round you know not not only a player but Uh, how i behave how i talk to people you know that that really helped me those those initial years when but the only thing was when i went to him uh, i was just in second or third standard so i said i i want to train with your team and it was like say a bangalore fc team where a third standard kid goes and asks the coach i want to train with bangalore fc it was like that yeah so that's when he said you're too small now yeah. but uh, i kept going there i kept every day his training i was there so somehow i was managed to convince him to train me so 
he just he just did, saw my school timings and then he decided that you know he will take up a slot one hour he will train with me so in the beginning it was like he was highly impressed you know then he said uh, i would like to take more sessions with you and what he started doing was he made me train with the uh, senior team as well okay you know but it was not going and playing with them maybe sometimes stand on the goal they don't have a goalkeeper or something yeah so he found me brave enough <laughs> so then he started uh, most of the time he was with me then it was on in when i was in 10th standard you know 10th and then he started he made me play for a third division club so that's when i played my first first game that was icl that's called indian cultural league okay so it's managed by those uh, bengali association so since my coach was a bengali so that's when in 1986 i played my first game for a club <laughs> yeah i was in my 10th standard and i really did well and from there my journey began then when i was in my 12th standard that's when uh, i got into air india and then i used to play as a striker so you know i always tell the kids you know it's very important like uh, my son example my son yeah. he says i want to play midfield but but my coach he always makes me play right back he makes me play center back so i give him my example you know i i was a striker but somewhere i felt uh, i didn't have that uh, the killer instinct the killer instinct that knack that smell for the goal for the goal yeah, yeah being a striker because my 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 thing was i was more a team game a team player who will run up and down yeah. you know so when that strength is needed there to score the goals i was i couldn't do it so the first year when i signed for india i was supposed to be i was not they were not ready to renew my contract so that's when what happened was towards the end of the season most of the players the senior players went home and then there was a tournament in durg uh, bilai Uh, so we had to go for the tournament and they didn't have a central defender so he said I'll, i i told him i'll play and that that tournament uh, changed my life for for the for the you know whatever i am today that tournament changed that's because from the striker i played as a defender i got three man of the match yeah. and then i he signed me for the next season and from there the state team the national team and in 94 in, in just 2 years time i was offered from all the clubs all the big clubs like east bengal mohan bagan chachil dempo yeah all all the top clubs wanted to sign me and i was i was not for it i mean to say like uh, you know all these clubs big clubs i'm just playing in air india with a stipend of some 1800 rupees Okay. <laughs> and then this big offer comes in yeah so it was something like so from there from 94 it just started it just kicked off okay okay well i mean when i a lot of people so i mean uh, i was born the year you were probably playing for air india so okay. i was born in 93 i think that's the year you'll probably be playing for air india as well yeah right? 92 93. i started with air india yeah. So a lot of people in our generation don't even know these uh, these anecdotes. Yeah. So I think it's it's amazing, and I think legends of Indian football, such as yourself, these stories need to be preserved as well. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that with us. Um, but speaking of of the of how football was back then, before the I League, the the NFL, and of course these big clubs, and through Air India, you found a way into into East Bengal as well yeah. uh, through your performances. Uh, football back then. you know how how different do you see that or how difficult do you see that pathway i'm sure even back then even even then uh, although it's these main clubs like air india and east bengal and mohan bagan uh, and now you have the indian super league clubs but how difficult was that journey even back then because you will have competition it's not yeah, like you yeah. were the only player uh, from there there'll be so many more exactly. competing for the center back yeah um and that competition aspect still remains for players even today so what did you go through when you were uh, you know making your way through football back then see as i said uh, back then we didn't have academies there was only one tata football academy 
and to get there was the biggest challenge because you have say they will have a team of squad of 20 25 players and it's all over india yeah. so it used to be very difficult i i tried a lot to get into tata football academy but it never happened because uh, the scouts never came to mumbai but one yeah. uh, tosif one tosif jamal was there he was in tfa that time uh and those days no academies no training as such because i used to train alone with my coach he used to yeah. he used to just develop my skill you know he said this is this is these are the basics what you need for football so he used to work alone alone with me he will be in his scooter and i'll be running behind him so that's how he developed my fitness okay. you know there was no like now how we have very professional setup now you have dpdl they play they get so many games in a year yeah. i'm sure in those days if we had got all this i'm sure we would have been a better player yeah you know those i'll tell you uh, when i retired when i got into coaching i went to bilaspur first you know there i literally had to uh, get hold of the feet and i have to show them this is how you hit the ball yeah you know that's when i really got to know the basic of football Yeah. because i was just playing you know Correct. without was, without breaking down the technique or anything yeah, yeah. so n- once i got into coaching i really understood what football is you know how we have to do things yeah so that really helped and my initial four four years in the coaching in this place like chatisgarh and madhya pradesh it really helped me be a better coach you know for sure okay. yeah and uh, speaking of your playing days sir um air india obviously was your first opportunity where where you got that and uh, was that you, you signed for churchill brothers after that yeah right so uh, how who was it that spotted you and i'm guessing this is the first big goan club that has come for you uh, like you said your stipend from stipend you're going to a big contract now yeah so how did you deal with that experience as a player for the first time <laughs> you know that was that was really a funny funny thing uh, like i was in uh, chennai playing our santosh trophy Though that day i think that time it was madras yeah it was not chennai yeah so we are playing a santosh trophy there and we we didn't make it to the semi final and i remember i was literally crying inside that session because I, i was i was like that i put all my 100% in the game and if i'm not winning i'm i'm crying <laughs> yeah so it was like that and then what happens is uh, the team manager comes he gives me a letter are kyu ro raha hai bhai letter padh le so so that time uh, a new coach had come rustam akramo so he spotted me and he, he selected me for the national team okay so i see the letter i read the letter again i start crying <laughs> <laughs> but this time out of happiness out of happiness yeah. yeah you know it was really emotional and then the next day what happens is i start uh, and we were staying in the stadium those days you know now these these days the players get five star hotel and all and we were staying in the stadium inside the stadium yeah. those dormitories yeah. and imagine we were staying there and we have internationals like yusuf ansari jacinto de silva godfrey parera all internationals staying yeah. in the stadium yeah you know so first mohan bagan came they took me to the hotel then east bengal came took me to the hotel then all the clubs like that so yeah. and just imagine i'm getting 1800 rupees so one of the senior players in the state team he tells me no sir your worth is much much more ask for 50000 so <laughs> i said it's not even 10 times <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so from 1800 is 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 expect me to ask 50000 rupees so i'm not able to do it so so chachil alimo the owner he calls up so i'm talking to him and i'm telling him like okay give me 15000 okay no problem <laughs> yeah so i go back to the stadium and godfrey is there and he is like i'll kill you <laughs> what what have you done no no call up now and tell him no i want 50000 so i call back and i said sir yeah tell me musa what happened sir i want 25000 <laughs> <laughs> So he like okay no problem so even even that is is less than for sure yeah, yeah. so he is there beside me because those days we didn't have mobile so it was yeah. from the local pcu okay so he is there beside me 
ஒலிம்பிக் <laughs> so i was i was most of the time with the pre olympic team so we were having a friendly game the senior team and the under 23 olympic team so because most of the players are for both the teams yeah so we are preparing for world cup qualifiers and the olympic qualifiers so that's when i injured my left knee uh, my acl was badly damaged and i missed the asian games i missed olympics i missed the world cup okay and then it was those days the operation also was not good so it used to take time 9 months for recovery and then yeah so it took me a whole year to get back into action and then the next season i played well and east bengal again offered me okay so and then again i got into the national team yeah and then played the nehru gold cup saf cup we won the saf cup and nehru cup we with the uh, we lost in semi final in tie breakers yeah so Yeah. yeah it was not that, easy those days because yeah. these days if you see the players uh, with injury also they get contract but those days as i said uh, it took me a year to okay get back to football so okay. those days the club won't take that chance you know to give you that contract and also we we had to really work hard and these days yeah. with the injury also they get contracts yeah yeah so a lot of things have changed the way and we didn't have physios in our team those days even the national team we didn't have physio and now you'll have 3 to 4 physios physios doctors yeah even in the club even even our small kids also have physios correct, correct. even at dpdl we see physios uh, exactly coming. so i think uh, like you said football has changed for sure from back then till what it is now but one thing that remains is how a player uh, overcomes adversity and i think that that moment of your time uh, of of your playing uh-huh. career where you mentioned that the injury was there you did not have a contract as well i think that for me is if i was in your position that is clear adversity you know where you're not you don't have money coming in and and but you love the of game course. so much of course uh, so that part of adversity st- remains in today's sport as well where it may not be re- contract related but of course injuries remain sitting on the bench is an adversity for players so as a player right what was your mental side if you can give us a bit of your inputs on how you overcame that because a lot of players today whatever kind of adversity they face i think they need to learn from um, incidents like these on how they can yeah. overcome it you see as i told you about my contract part you know <laughs> where i could have asked for more money and yeah. I, i didn't do that you know i was i was very shy i uh, i wouldn't speak to you know like how i'm speaking to you now those days i would never do that you know it's it was only after the uh, when i got into the indian team and a lot of reporters and all started talking to me yeah. that's how i got open up yeah. you know from 95 then i went to churchill and then i start speaking i was not confident those days yeah. and then uh, as you as you said like you know the pressure like the contract now now each player every player they will have 3 to 4 years 5 years contract yeah. and those days we used to have only one year contract no no club will give you two years contract yeah so you won't believe we are playing first level and we are in the national team but still but still we are worried for the next season whether we'll get the contract or not it is because because if you see those days you know few players like few players used to be very careful towards the end of the season hmm. if you get injured you're not getting a contract okay. so those days those thing also was there you know we used to yeah. be careful towards the end of the season but i never did that yeah and then it was it was always it was always a problem like uh, because i already had a injury yeah so it was not easy for me you know yeah and then then the nature what i had you know uh, like 
like when i when i joined air india so there what happened was those days those days you know we used to have a lot of pressure from the senior team senior players hmm. so i was guy who was always you know i'll just reserve. do my work reserve i will just do my work and i'll just move out so to get out of it you know uh, air india i was getting a job you know they were giving me a very good job uh, which i didn't accept uh, then bank all the banks were offering me job customs they were asking me as a officer but uh, my aim was something else and i wanted to play big clubs and play for the country so that's when that's when you know just to get out of this uh, thing like i'm not open up i'm not opening up much you know i need to get out of this to handle the pressure that's when i wanted to change the club so when i went to churchill brothers and all the pressure is totally different because there you have 25 30 players who are equally good yeah you know and then you have to compete every day even the training session was you have to give you 100% yeah because we had a foreign coach who was really good he liked me a lot and you know he helped me a lot in my after my surgery also he helped me a lot so to get out of all this thing i i said i don't want to, because those days most of the players used to take up job yeah because the contract was not uh, big enough like how you get now yeah so the first thing was job security my parents was really worried about it like uh, why i am not taking up a job i said no this is what i want to do and i am doing that only because i was confident yes i can do it you know this is what i always tell the kids also you know when you start believing in yourself your parents will start trusting you in the beginning my pa- parents in permit me they wanted me to take up a job yeah. but when they saw me uh getting into the national team getting big big uh, big teams contract yeah. then they stop uh, worrying about me but they were worried what after football yes but i had i had made up my mind uh, when i was playing for mahindra uh, that time it was 98 99 98 i joined mahindra that's when i i, I wanted to get into coaching yeah. that's when my second operation happened my yeah, yeah. and then i started uh, reading the coaches how they how they take the sessions you know how they speak what they speak the mental aspects then we had this harish rao uh, who was a team manager then he became the coach also so he was a psychology student so he used to handle the players in a very different way i was under bimal ghosh he was handling the players in a different way he was more aggressive harish rao was more you know humble and he was very polite yeah he is to have more fun in the sessions so more team bonding yeah so all this thing i started reading the coaches then you know how they handle the players how they handle uh, the sessions how they handle the match pressure yeah so while playing i started doing because those days there was no license correct all the all the coaches who were there were all ex players only only mr naimuddin and gabriel joseph they all, they they had when are playing this they had the license yeah and they had done through aff and they have done from uh, afc europe, or afc or from europe, europe. somewhere okay. they had done from brazil and all okay because those days there was no license yeah. there was no license yeah so that's how my journey began you know okay so uh, in 2004 when i joined mohammedan sporting uh, so we had this coach uh, biswajit bhattacharya so the, he was the guy who is to keep uh, he was very nice to me you know i was the most senior player me raman vijayan was there one ratan singh was there so he felt i can be a good coach so he started educating me you know then he he really uh, convinced me to retire from football he said okay. because uh, mobran sporting was playing the second division that time and i was a captain then and we we were the second division i league champion and i had scored some 5 6 goals i was the highest score for a team so he said musa this is the right time for you to leave because you are you are living in a very high note yeah you know because you are in i league of course i know you will you will work hard you will come but somewhere you know you will suffer so that's when i took his suggestion because i used to respect him so i did that and now when we meet i always tell him you gave me the 
the right best time. advice, yeah. the right advice, the right time, yeah. and I am able to do something in life. Sure. You know, that's when we had been to one place in Chakradharpur. There, I met one guy who wanted to do something in Bilaspur. Yeah. So that's how. That's how your it, coaching journey started. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so we were talking about your uh, transition from player to coach. Right. That's that's where uh, this. Uh, if you can tell us more about this transition, you know, uh, you spoke about Chhattisgarh and, and Bilaspur. That's where it started. Um, but what was the moment like? How you had that one special moment as a player that changed everything uh, in your coaching career? What was that one moment that that turned things around? You know, uh, in two thousand seven, two thousand seven, two thousand seven, two thousand nine, when I joined Mumbai FC. They hired me as an under-18 coach, the academy coach. So the first season, I saw the players and I told the told the management like you know, uh, this team, yes, it's a good team because what happened was they in Mumbai it's a super division, then the elite division. So where Air India, Mahindra, and all used to play. So they were the super division champions, and then I just told the management uh, like. Um, this team, yes, they will play good football, but I don't guarantee you that you know they will be there or you know win many matches because those days team like Central Bank, Central Railway, Air India, Mahindra, ONGC all are playing, yeah. so it it will become difficult. So they said, don't worry about it, you know, and you just make players. So you know when the club tells you that, you know, so. We, we will be coming to that later when we talk about the other coaches, how to deal with the players and all. Yeah. So I was I was more encouraging to the players, you know, like just just go there, play and enjoy, you know. And then what happened was towards the end of the season, I went to office, you know, that's when uh, Mukul Chaudhary, who's the CEO of Jamshedpur oh, FC now, yeah. yeah. So he was the CEO for Mumbai FC. So that's when he said, like, you know, Musa management is not happy. And then we cannot, you know, increase your salary. I am not come here for salary. I would be stupid to give a bad result and uh, ask for my rise in salary or something. So, so he said, but but still we need to go for result. That's what I told you in the beginning. You know, you want result, I'll give you result now. So that's when my approach towards the team changes. You know, when there is pressure from the club. How to handle the place? It becomes different. Yeah. So I have under 18 players where I gave them more freedom. I gave them, you know, but the freedom was there, but the focus was more on winning. Yeah. You know, that was my first experience. Uh, how to get result? You know. Yeah. So which is important. Which, which, is, so which important. is also which is important. What football is, is about. I exactly. Think. But you know, that's when I understood because I was working in a school, school kids and all. Yeah. So the, now a professional club and under 18. So what they are looking for is players to get graduated to the senior team. Yeah. So my approach changed. Yeah. So the way I handled. So that year uh, we we went for we went we won we were the super division champions. Yeah. Then we were runners up for the I League under 18 I League and only with Mumbai players. It was not that you know I could get players from out and out. Yeah. So. Then under 15, we have we used to have this Manchester United Cup. Uh, they used to sponsor the yeah. league, a, a tournament. So that's when uh, I I made a team for some a month, and we were in the finals. You know that's that's when I didn't have to say anything. I I got two months bonus, and then my salary doubled. Yeah. You know, and that's when I started getting offers, more offers. Then I. After that, straight away I jumped into Air India. Uh, they were doing bad, and then I got some eleven games, nine or ten games I got. Yeah. But when I see as a coach, you learn every every time you're learning. Yeah. So that's that's when uh, I took the team, and the team was. Uh, you see what happened is as a coach, you you want you want your team to play the way you want them to play, the fitness level. Yeah. So all those things were missing. So again, a learning moment for me. So when you are taking up a team, how it should be, yeah. you know. So as same way last season when I got ISL team. 
so it was the same what i did with air india and now but here the the situation was different we were in bubble and all those stuff so they couldn't hire a new coach so it was me who had to take the challenge and again again a good good learning moment but but that time it was a small club air india but now you're dealing with a club like bangalore fc where you have top players like dimas sunil uh, gurpreet eric hanan you know all top players udanta you know so then how to handle this players so this 10 games in isl really helped me grow as a coach now yeah so so we we were discussing this offline uh, the other day as well where i think a coach needs to realize whether because coaching youth is different coaching kids is very different from coaching the seniors yeah. and i know you as a person you thrive in in the environment of the seniors and and you yeah. you say your own management style is yeah. slightly more uh, of of uh, more aggressive more aggressive i can say yeah. that yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so uh, you know but now let's bring this back to dpdl right let's because here we have a lot of dpdl coaches who will be listening to this who yeah. will be taking your uh, words of of advice so when a dpdl coach who is working with under 8 under 10 starts believing that they are coaching a senior team in front of them you know that's that's the problem that that we as organizers also we mm-hmm. we can we can see it right where they are treating eight year olds as a senior player yeah 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 right so what is your you know how would you and dpdl season is a is a long season it's 22 games it's longer than the isl by the way exactly it's, yeah. it's yeah. 22 <laughs> games and then you this you go into the knockout quarter stages. finals and semi finals yeah so it's a long journey that these coaches have to be on and it's not just the players who are learning it's the coaches who are also learning over this period of, of 20 22 games yeah. so how would you tell these coaches to to deal with situations like this how what would your words of guidance be for them you know first i would like to relate these coaches with myself you know yeah because i was with pune fc 3 years and then 2016 i was doing my pro license and that's when what happened was i got the news that pune fc is shutting down yeah so that's when chirag tanna he offered me to join uh, reliance, reliance uh, young champs yeah so i was a bit reluctant i was not sure whether i should join because i said i'm doing my pro license and you asking me to take a under 13 team who are 11 12 years old and i'm not uh, so used to coaching this small kids yeah said so don't worry you, i know you can do it the way you are you are polite you are, you have a lot of patience and all the stuff i said okay <laughs> since there is no other job let me take it yeah. you know in the beginning it was very difficult for me you know <laughs> because uh, there we had this uh, head of youth was a dutch guy the technical director was a dutch guy so there the whole the way they approach the kit was totally different it is it is like you know they allow the kids to take decisions and i come from a background where the coach or the senior players will tell you what to do what not to do and here the kid is telling me i will do this i won't do this you know mm-hmm. so that was something i'm not used to and i was getting i was boiling from it <laughs> like a kid a kid just like the first first one week every saturday they will play a friendly game then on so this goalkeeper i didn't give him an opportunity so he just comes and tell me why you didn't play me and i was like so our goalkeeper coach was there a jignesh so <laughs> uh, he he handled the situation then he made him understand don't worry you know it was a tough opponent so coach felt you know then he made me understand how to deal with this kids yeah, yeah so same way uh, but but somewhere i felt i am not meant for this yeah you know so as as you say as we see these coaches screaming from the touch line you know so somewhere you need to have that uh, thing inside you what is your strong point what is your weak point or what type of coach you are correct that's very important for you to analyze yourself Yeah. that's when i really thought about it you know and i felt no i am not meant for this you know i am better with uh, adults who were me being more aggressive on the pitch outside the pitch i am totally a different person i am very humble i am very quiet of course yeah but on the pitch i am totally different personality you know i am very aggressive with the players so even the even the players know about it yeah 
so this coaches they should understand when they are dealing with this small kids you know uh, what i learned what i learned in uh, reliance one year uh, it's it's like allowing the kids to take decision yeah. here what is what i am seeing is these coaches are making a mistake of telling the kids what to do correct yeah like example like a kid takes a shot and the coach is shouting why you took a shot why don't you pass so what happens is for the kid it becomes he start thinking taking shots is a crime i yeah. should not take shots i should yeah. only pass yeah so the way you approach the kid yeah. it's it has to change you know yeah. it can be it can be encouraging okay a beautiful shot but do, don't you think we could have done what more we could do correct you know maybe you can pass or you can travel with the ball yeah so it's very important we start educating these coaches uh, yeah Uh, the communication yeah you know when they are doing the license i am sure you also did your license so yeah. you have the topic of communication problem solving and all okay. so it's very important what kind of communication you are giving to the kids so your approach to towards the kid what what kind of instruction you are giving it it, it should not be negative yeah you know like oh, as i gave you an example why you took that shot you know so that's that's not the right kind of communication or what else could you have done better there or how what, exactly. what other decision you could have taken yeah. there yeah but but that should happen in a in the training session in a match you cannot ask that kid <laughs> or you cannot correct correct just encourage just, him correct. yeah just encourage him yeah. a lovely shot you know it was beautiful yeah. because otherwise the kids uh, they will stop enjoying as as we know we want the kids to come to enjoy Correct. if the the day they stop enjoying they stop playing football yeah so yeah. the like uh, yeah. how we play on the streets i read lot of uh, johan cruyff you know yeah uh, i'm a big fan of his from his playing days if you if you read if you read about him he always says you know uh, when we were kids we used to play in the streets there was no rules we'll keep chappals as a goal post yeah and there were no rules to enjoy we used to enjoy the way we play there was no rules we'll just play the way we want we make our own rules so if if these coaches start doing that you know yeah. but i again understand there is pressure from we'll come to that also the parents <laughs> so yeah. actually what i see is uh, as parents it's not on, the coach has pressure not only from the parents it's more from the management also you know like yeah. if i am running an academy if my academy is not doing well i don't run i don't get more business or yes. more kids are coming in now i'm sure most of the kids would like to go to join barca or sports hood or bangalore fc yeah. you know looking for those opportunities but we need to we, we need to start educating these coaches you know yeah. like uh, we can do something we can have some sessions with these coaches and even with parents you know how to deal with the kids all those stuff yeah, yeah. so as i said these coaches should understand what kind of coach they are if you think you are aggressive don't coach under 8 under 10 correct yeah correct but again you know i'm not the right person to say that that don't coach you know yeah. we need good coaches we need yes. good coaches but through this platform i would like to tell them you know let's handle them more uh, in a nicer way better way uh, the most important part is the communication Yeah. what kind of communication you are giving let it be more positive not negative yeah. you know the negative things happens in the senior team and you know, all where they can handle pressure and they learn to handle pressure yeah. so if you see in under 18 i i coach the kids i i train them to handle pressure correct because it's it's needed at that age yeah. in the at beginning of, yeah, yeah in the beginning uh, the kids used to hate me but when they started getting opportunities to go and train with the senior team so then they started realizing what coach is saying is right and yeah. then they come and talk to the other boys you know sure. you should listen to coach you know the way the pressure is there in the senior team is much more than what the coach gives yeah you know it's not only it's not only from the senior players it's mental pressure correct so it's very important for all these coaches to understand all this correct so one one point that i took out of this um, is the decision making aspect and this is what i am seeing uh, in the league as well right um, the coaches today are making the decisions for the players whether it's every single pass every single shot that's taken uh, pressing when to press when not to press the coaches are telling the players what to do yeah. now 
from from whatever i have studied about football whatever i have from my experience right this much i have i have understood that the players who have the ability to to become world class or to to go on are the ones who are able to think for themselves the ones who make their own decisions on the pitch it may be a wrong decision also that's fine but that should be dealt with after the game in the analysis room to to correct yeah. but if you're not even allowed to make that decision uh, on in the first place right and the coach is making that for you then you'll probably never be a, a thinking player you'll never be someone who's using your brain on the pitch yeah. so uh, you know how can we i think this obviously this is a, a a message that needs to go out to the coaches as well that that even if you want to give a point it i think it should be during the half time break as well it is needed in the half time break you you should uh, uh, you know bring across your tactical points but during the game i think it has to be about encouragement it has to be about allowing the players to make their own decisions maybe giving uh, so so when i was in liverpool one of our uh, and i was coaching the university team over there what our head coach used to do is the uh, he used to have leaders within the team so you have a, a leader who's in charge of the midfield if if it's a 442 usually in england that, that they play even at the university level they are level. leaders in all positions in all positions and they are the ones who are kind of telling others what to do and and that also drives teamwork and at the same time it it lets them make their decisions as a team yeah. uh, and of course the coach is there to guide them and speak to them at the end of so i mean yeah these are just some inputs that uh, that we can use at dpd as you as you rightly said you know uh, the decision making and all so how will that come uh, giving instruction during a match or the best way is to have your design your sessions in such a way that your training session it should not be more in isolation it should yep. be game related yep. where the kids start taking their decision the decision making improves yeah so your sessions uh, should be in such a way because I, i i remember when i was made the head of youth so i used to sit with this coaches every time you know and i used to see this uh, session if it's a passing drill you will find two players standing opposite each other just pass 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 yeah so in a game it never happens like that Correct. it's always against an opposition yes so it's very important you have any session it can be passing it can be shooting let it let it be like a game situation where the kids have to start making decision yep. they have to take decisions so that's what we do at bfc now you know it's very important it it's yep. really important yeah so the coaches has to understand what if you want to do passing session uh, let it be more uh, like a game correct you know in in our coaching license also these days they say Yep. you know let your sessions be more game related yeah absolutely so it would be nice if this coach start doing this and the match while we keep saying our sessions have to be game related the the games that you play is a game itself you know and even yeah. there if you're not being allowed to take a decision i think that's where exactly exactly um, you know so that's what that's what again uh, you know what i learned in reliance when you having a game say we play a match on saturday so i think this message will be very good for this coaches so say you are playing bfc on saturday or sunday yeah yeah so you have the whole week yeah so you design your session in such a way that you are playing against bfc so what we used to do was say we are playing a game on saturday so it was always we used to take opponent if it's under 15 team we'll take under 18 team yeah. as a opponent so that we we are not worried about losing but we have some coaching points say like today we are looking only for uh, ball possession yeah you know yeah. so just related to that we'll just give them two to three instruction that's it yeah and we are looking only for that so in that particular match the kids have to do only three things so there's not much pressure on them yeah you know Correct. and then as you said not to keep shouting you know yeah. just keep reminding them what they have to do yeah just those three points and they are there oh yeah yeah we have to do this we have to do this that's enough correct so you have a one you have one week time yeah. so prepare them for that so that you know you're not screaming you're not shouting in the place yeah that's the time to prepare rather than on on match day exactly absolutely speaking of the um, we were talking about decision making right so today i i feel very bad for for the kids who are playing at dpdl because one decision making is coming from the coach one it's coming from themselves 
and the third decision making is actually the most important one that we see yeah. which is coming from the parents <laughs> on the touch line yeah so um and this you were there last night in fact you were there and and you you witnessed games in fact you've been coming since 2019 the very first season right um the importance i cannot stress this enough uh, the importance of parents in the role of talent development right it's it's immense uh, the kids are 70 80% of the times with their parents they're growing up at home they are around them they're learning uh, by watching them mm. you know they're growing up around them the parents have the biggest role actually i feel in in talent development yeah yeah right so i think it is important for us and we have a lot of parents who listen in um and you having that combination of being a coach and having to wear the the hat of a parent on the day let's say zidane is playing a match yeah, yeah. but you cannot coach because of course there's other coaches on the touch line so as a parent how do you approach uh, because uh, it's important for other parents also to learn and and understand the impact that that can have on player development yeah. their behavior uh see uh, first of all it's very important we during my playing days uh, i used to see cricket where the parents would come with the holding the bags and all used to i used to see lot of parents but for football you will not find hmm. you know because football was nothing big those days yeah. but now football the way it's growing the amount of parents i see for the games it's really nice yeah. you know and then uh, how how the football will improve is through this only yeah uh, the parents getting involved you know people getting involved yeah that's that's how the football is going to develop because just the kids playing football and the parents knowing nothing about football it won't help yeah so they have to come they have to learn of course it's nice they are screaming they are you know so just a request to the parents it's good to cheer but don't throw instructions because there the kids are getting confused yeah you know so me as a parent me as a parent like uh, the other day they were playing against uh, one team where zidane got a hit on his nose and he was bleeding okay so outside my wife said go and see what happened mela why the coaches are there you know yeah because <clears throat> it's not good on my part to go and interfere yeah you know so yesterday also after the game he was uh, vomiting so again she was tense and like go and see i said no the coaches are there they will take care yeah. you know they know they know how to handle the situation and for as far as i am concerned <clears throat> i i never uh, give him much uh, instruction about the way team is playing i will always tell him uh, where he can improve i i don't tell him how to play because his coach has given some instruction yeah. this is how the team should play yeah so for me to give those instruction is not good yeah so what i do is like like he got a hit on his nose so i give him example of cristiano ronaldo where he had a cut he got some seven stitches with that blood he was still playing and you just got a small hit on your nose and you just came out <laughs> so these are small things where we can you know uh, educate the kids you know Yeah. because wife is worried outside no why you are forcing him to play no he if he if because i remember my coach telling me till you feel you are not going to die don't get out of the pitch <laughs> you nice. know yeah. that was the instruction so so i i told him the same thing the same what my coach told me i told him the same thing my wife said what you are speaking don't worry you know yeah because the kids have to be brave you know because he wants to be a professional player he dreams to be a professional player and if you want to be a professional player you have to be strong from here yeah not here it has to be here if you are strong here yeah you can you can cross any hurdles you can come out of any situations yeah so me as a parent uh, when i watch the game i don't know uh, i am i'm doing both yeah i'm there as a coach also i'm there as a parent also so most of the time i'm looking at the opponent the kids yeah uh, the players you know i'm trying to see what quality we have because uh, at bfc i have told the club like you know in in 5 years 5 years to 10 years time i want to see most of the players coming from bangalore, bangalore yeah what would your words of guidance be for those parents who don't know about the technical side of the game they've not played the game but they see talent in their kids 
they see that the kids can become something and they are loving the sport uh, you know what would your advice be to such parents who come week in week out yeah it's it's really nice when they come out there in numbers it's really nice it's really nice to see so many people coming for the to watch these kids and it's always an encouragement for the kids but somewhere the kids go down when the they get confused when they are playing they need to understand something there is some instruction going through the coaches yeah and then the parents also start giving the instruction i have seen many many academies parents they start throwing instructions you know that's when the kids get confused they listen to the parents and or listen to the coach so as as a parent let's be more responsible you know uh, let them let them enjoy the game let them make their own decision let them make mistakes Yeah. And unless they don't make mistakes, they don't learn. Yeah. So, as I said, everybody likes to win. So, let's not worry about only winning, winning, winning. Let's let's worry about how my kid is playing. You know, uh, what kind of decisions he is making on the pitch. Yeah. Again, again, it's very important. We start educating the parents at Bangalore FC. We do that. You know, if you see when Bangalore FC is playing, you won't find the parents screaming or, of course, they will be cheering. when when they score a goal and cheering cheering is good by the way if if people are of listening course, like cheering is good it's very important it's yeah. very important for the kids to feel that vibe you know yeah so that's that's very important but let's restrict ourselves from throwing instructions yeah you know that that really disturbs the kids they yeah. they are not able to make that let them make mistake let them make mistake that's how they will learn you know if you see my son till last season i i never liked him you know he was not good but now when he's he's playing now i i feel so nice to see he making decisions yeah. you know last till last season he was not getting many opportunities to play but he will get 5 minutes or 6 minutes and i used to always tell him think about it why you're not getting those opportunities yeah yeah i yeah so i i'll be questioning him you know trying to understand yeah of course the other parents were not into football cannot speak into the technical yes. way but it helps me to guide my son you know but again it's it's very important you can help the kids in some other way you know like you can ask questions to the kid they yeah. know a lot of things yeah. because these days kids are so smart you won't believe i i don't know much about the players in uh, premier league or spanish league but my son knows everything from the coach to manager yeah. <laughs> every everyone correct so the kids are smart so instead of instead of we giving them how to play what to do it's better ask you them. ask them yeah let them come out with their ideas yeah. there's they come out with lot of solutions yeah you know absolutely so that way we can giving ownership to the kids also from exactly the exactly yeah. that would be the best way since if you don't know the game don't coach the kids absolutely. you know don't give yeah. them wrong advice yeah. at least yeah through your experience through your experience in your life yeah. you can relate to your kid and yeah. you can help the kid grow yes absolutely and another important point sir um when like and this came because you you mentioned that okay last year your son was not uh, you, you felt he was not good but now this year he is i think a lot of parents should realize this that just because uh, the kid is playing amazing right now and he's 8 or 9 years old he he or she is 8 or 9 years old it doesn't mean at the age of 13 14 15 they will still remain the same of course th- there's going to be changes in the body there's going to be other complex uh, changes in the environment that will influence the the child as well and the other way round as well if a child today is not playing good doesn't mean that he is he or she is not meant for football in 5 years time this kid may show some some signs of progress something like the gareth bale story if you know how gareth bale was uh, in, in the academy and then how he turned out for tottenham in the first team um, so yeah i think this is also a point that parents should understand that just whatever happens whether your your child is playing well or not playing well it's about yeah. supporting them and just being with them no matter what exactly we always we always tell the parents there are parents who are worried my son is not playing well he is not getting opportunities should i stop his football yeah that's that's not the solution correct you know and again there are early bloomers there are late bloomers yes so l- allow allow them to follow the dream you know uh, this is again what i learned in reliance you know there they ask the kids like uh, 
they have this uh, short term uh, goals, goals and, and long term goals. goals so in this long term goals they want to play manchester united real madrid and all so if you if you just speak to some guy out there like pagal hai kya you know <laughs> manchester khelega yeah so that's where i learned that's his dream don't take away that Correct. dream from that kid Correct. so he says he wants to play manchester united okay now i ask him how is that going to happen yeah what is your pathway how you will reach there yeah so when you teach that kid when the kid starts speaking this is what i'll do this is what this is my pathway first i will do here you know that's how it is where you know my son always speaks about being the indian team captain i never tell him don't be stupid yeah. that's his dream yeah you know it, you don't know you don't know Absolutely. future i don't know he don't know yeah. but that's his dream and he has to work towards it and we as parents we have to help them yeah it's very important so yeah. uh, let's not kill the dream true that's that's very important true with that uh, noshad sir uh, firstly we want to thank you for your time for allowing us to uh, you know allowing us uh, our crew to come to your house and and change your furniture left right center for this thank you so much for your time uh, i think a lot of insightful points that you've given us today which will not just be helpful for players and coaches but for parents as well which is which is the ecosystem that we at dpdl are targeting you know it is player development can only happen when all three are working together the player the coach and the parent right so uh, thank you so much for your time and any anything uh, you'd like to say in in closing uh, that you feel we may have missed out nothing nothing <laughs> <laughs> nothing just you know uh, see what dpdl is doing it's not only dpl dpdl you know like association has to come in bangalore fc because of pandemic we are not having tournaments the more they play matches the more they are going to improve yeah so so for all this it's the as you said all three has to work together the coaches the organizers the parents so it's and the parents play a very important role in helping you know now if you see dpdl parents are very supportive you know yes they are different when the match is going on but i'm sure they are really supporting a lot so yes. that that also helps so we keep supporting you know we keep supporting and we see that you know this this program continues yeah. Yeah. and our kids are benefited from this the generations to come yeah this is the best best platform because as i said if i had got this so many games i would have been a better player probably in manchester united uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but those days we never dreamt of uh, manchester and all yeah. we dreamt of east bengal mohan bagan yeah. you know yeah that was our dream and to play for the country absolutely thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you time. thank you so much for having me thanks for listening in so much to learn and so much to absorb from that episode i hope you enjoyed it catch us again on the dpdl talent development podcast as we bring to you another episode with a leading expert until then we'd love to hear from you follow us on instagram facebook twitter or shoot us an email at developmentleague at the rate doublepass.com.